I'm at the Manx Heritage Foundation talking with Adrian Kane, the Manx Language Officer, with us also a guest from the University of Limerick, Tyke, who's here to do some work with you. And uh, this is what we thought we'd have a little chit chat. It's, it's great, yeah. isn't it? The, 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 the power of the Manx language does spread all over the place. Yeah, we had a lecturer over from uh, the University of Adelaide a couple of weeks ago who was speaking about um, a lot of the work he does in uh, with Aboriginal communities also in Norfolk Island. We just had a student over from Japan finding out about uh, the Manx language too. We've got some more visitors coming over soon and, and tyg has been over quite a number of times over the years to do, um, with his work at the University of Limerick. So tell us about this work and the fascination with the Manx language then. Well, I'm a sociolinguist. I study language and society, mostly Irish, and uh, Manx and Scottish Gaelic are very closely related to, to Irish and so, uh, so is the situation, the social life of the language, if you like. So uh, the Manx uh, revival is uh, really almost parallel to what happens in Ireland but slightly different and that's where the interest is. Okay so how do you see it from from the outside the Manx language where is it now? Well it's in a much healthier place than a lot of people think I think if you open up a lot of texts sociolinguistics um, is convinced that Manx is still dead really um, it never really was dead it's um, it's gone through some uh, hard times maybe but it's it's back and uh, it's really quite vigorous. Uh, the uh, the life of a language uh, which has come through a shift and come back out the other end is, is something which is really very important to study, I think. Uh, in Ireland and in Scotland, the Gaelic languages have still been spoken in, in, their, in their heartland areas, in the Gaeltacht areas, but uh, it's basically in a revival situation too. So you're really, really looking at the resources which are available to revivalists. Uh, can they call on a group of native speakers or fluent speakers? Uh, what's the literature? How do people go about their lives in these languages? So Manx doesn't maybe have that um, native speaker background of, of a living community, uh, but it's getting one. And Adrian, because of that, I mean, in the sense it almost died out, there's very little recordings of the original Manx. Do you sometimes feel you are blagging it or making it up as you go along to... <laughs> I mean, well, all, I do that in life generally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the language does move along, doesn't it? Anyway. Oh yeah, no, no. So there are quite a lot of recordings of native speakers, mm. and of course, I um, I learned it off people like Brian Stowell, who in turn learned it off the native speakers. So there's a, a far greater degree of continuity than I think people are aware of, really. But hey, look, the art, you know, the language, you know, if if people like Ned Madrill and Dougie Farragher were here, they'd understand everything we're talking about, and. Uh, we were talking about before that it's a shame they're not really because I think they'd be amazed about the transition in the language and it's uh, and it's credit to all the work that they were involved in when you know when in a less in a far less favourable climate. Let's do it, us. Continue to shed and rain. However, I don't wish you clash and shed. And now, here is a unique event in the history of our language, the first ever broadcast of a news bulletin in Gilg on Sunday the 11th of October 1970 from Manx Radio. Mr Douglas Farger is the reader. It's now time for News in Manx. Radio was and and your research, so you say it's positive, that you be coming back quite often then to keep this up and learn more? I've been trying to learn more for a long time, actually. I started coming in the 1980s, a long time ago, when I, I discovered really, uh, as in my late teens, where, that there was uh, a Manx language. Uh, I, I didn't really know very much about it before then. Um, I think it's the closeness to, to Irish and to Scottish Gaelic, which was the, the interesting part, and yet some variations, some differences. There are things in, in Manx which... Uh, um, have developed in, in quite different ways to, to, to Irish and Scottish Gaelic, but it's not that far away that we see it really as a completely different mm. foreign language. It's like a parallel, like a sister language. So you two can communicate and you kind of know where you're going um, if, you, if you're keeping <laughs> true to your, your Manx and your Irish? I mean, clearly you can understand, uh, you know, there are different languages at the end of the day, though. So yeah. you, you do know, you, you know, a lot of it you can uh, yeah. follow, but... Uh, I think um, they are d they're the same but different. <laughs> that's it. That, that's it, really. Yeah, they're um, uh, they're they're almost like alternative realities. Uh, <laughs> much, uh, to move a little bit towards the science fiction end. <laughs> they're, um, no, they're, they're different languages. They belong to different areas. They come from a common heritage and they have a lot in common. So yes, we can we can talk to an extent across languages in a way, but that's not talking the same language. 
I know you've got mm-hmm. lots of work done. We are talking a few more times this week. You're Looking having a busy time, it. aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's good. You know, it's good to be busy, good yeah. to um, promote the language, good to let people know that there's, a, there's some good positive stuff happening in the Isle of Man about not just language, but generally um, culture and identity. And just from this, if someone's watching, if they're interested in taking it further, where should they go? Yeah, well, contact me in the first instance if you're interested in speaking Manx. And they can ju- just phone me in 451 um, 098, 451 And that in Manx, please? Yeah, well, Mutad Giri, Feather Mac, McKeon and Gil, just Law Rum, Adrian Kane, Tashen and Kier, Queg, Nen, Nyao, Nyai, Park. Thank you.